Hi everybody, my name is Sarah Lean and I'm a Senior Cloud Advocate at Microsoft. Today I want to explore the term lift and shift and explain what it means to you. So if you're working within the cloud or studying to um, learn about the cloud, then you might have heard the phrase lift and shift. Now, when we talk about lift and shift, we're talking about how companies and organisations can move their workloads into, say, Microsoft Azure or another cloud provider. Now, when we mean lift and shift, we are talking about taking that workload as is. So if it's hosted on a server, say a, a virtual machine running Windows Server 2016, for example, we would move it into the cloud and run it as a virtual machine running Windows Server 2016. We wouldn't change anything. It literally would be that lift and shift. We would take it from one location and put it into another location without changing any of it. Now, lots of people say that this isn't the most efficient way to use the cloud, isn't maybe the best way to introduce yourself to the cloud. I would argue that this is the best way to introduce yourself to the cloud. Um, it allows you to utilise the knowledge that you have and you have had for all those years managing your environment next to you in your own data centre on-prem and take those skill sets, use them while you upskill using the cloud and learn all the functionality and features of that new cloud provider. Equally, I'm not a fan of just calling that lift and shift migration because I think you're actually lifting and improving your workload. And the reason I say that I, I think it's more lifting and improving your workload is because you're taking advantage of the hyperscale cloud that potentially Microsoft Azure or some of the other cloud providers actually have. You could be running a server on a bit of physical um, tin, physical server kit that is maybe two or three or even five years old and has maybe been um, used and abused by the workloads and, the, the, and, and things that you've had running on it. Whereas in the cloud, it's more um, newer technology. Um, the technology that's there is quite advanced and can be much faster. So you're not just um, running the workload in almost the same scenario. You're running it nine times out of 10 in a better environment. Plus you have all these features that surround yourself within the cloud. So you can bolt on some of the additional features that you've maybe not had access to when you've been running your, your, your workload in, in your own data center. So you can maybe attach something like Azure Update Management to help automate your patching. You could use Azure Automation to try and automate some of the workloads and some of the functionality that you might perform manually. You could even use something like Azure Policy to try and govern your workloads a bit better. So stop people from maybe deploying something or changing that workload um, and, and taking it out of a state that you want to support it in. So lift and shift is literally taking your workload from one place and putting it into the other. But if you're doing that when you move to the cloud, I argue that you're actually lifting and improving your workload. If you have any feedback, if you have any comments, if you have any questions, please do utilize the questions box below and I will be sure to get back to you.